want you to go with me to the book of Genesis. Chapter 28. And I want to begin reading from the 10th verse. I want you all to get on the train early now. going to begin reading verse 10. I need you to get on the train now. If you have it, say amen. amen. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haram. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were, what? Ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, and this is the Lord now, listen, listen at what the Lord said. I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and the south, and you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be what? Shall be what? Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. Somebody say the house of God. Say it with conviction, the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head set it up as a pillar, poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place, what, what? Bethel. But the name of the city had been lost preciously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, look, look, look. Then Jacob made a vow saying, look, look, listen, listen. If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a what? A what? Oh, some of y'all not on the train now. I will surely give what? I will surely give what? I will surely give what? A tenth. I want to use for just a few moments on this morning 
intuitive tithing. Intuitive tithing. Father, smile on us now. I ask that you would be with us in this preaching moment. Use me, Lord, that the people might be blessed in your name. Thank God and amen. Intuitive tithing. Intuitive tithing. Pastor, it seems like you trying to show off some of your education this morning, starting with such a big word, intuitive. Well, let me break it down for you. Intuitive. Intuitive. Intuitive is that feeling that you are doing the right thing despite no conscious reasoning. It's instinctive. Let everyone say intuitive. It is a feeling. Repeat after me. It is a feeling. A sensation. Come on, y'all. Get on the train now. It is a feeling. A sensation. That I am doing right without reasoning. Conscious reasoning. Intuitive tithing. Tithing, most of you who are here know that tithing is a tenth. Let, let everybody say the tenth. In biblical numerology, the number ten is that of redemption. Redemption. Let everybody say redemption. Uh, uh. The idea is, the principle is, the concept is that, that the first tenth redeems the rest. The root, uh, help me Holy Spirit, the, the tenth, the first tenth redeems the rest. The first ten determines the welfare of the other ninety. The root Produces the fruit. So, somebody missed that. I just put you up on game. The, the root provides the fruit. The first ten redeems what's coming afterward. So the root provides the fruit. You can't have the tree bearing fruit without, y'all get, I need you to get on the train now. Uh, uh. In Genesis chapter one, the phrase God said is mentioned ten times. There were ten 
gods in Egypt that had to be destroyed before Israel could be redeemed. Now, there were ten generations between Adam and Noah. Another ten between Noah and Abraham. I'm, 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 I'm trying to pitch this idea of ten to you such that you gain a deeper appreciation for tithe. The lamb, the lamb that was sacrificed for atonement had to be selected on the 10th day of the first month. Ah. Ah. Uh. You and I were created with 10 fingers and 10 toes. The 10 fingers represents our might our strength in which in the agrarian day the farming community what they labored to produce with their hands and feet 10% belong to God. When Joshua gets to the promised land, Jericho is the first of the ten cities. Canaan is the tenth city. But when they get to Jericho, God says, don't touch nothing. Because the tenth belongs. Y'all, I need you to get on. I, I need you to understand that the tenth is significant to God. Uh, whatever Jericho had, it did not benefit God. The tenth, the tithe that Jericho represented did not benefit God, but it was the principle that it would bless those who followed, gave leadership to the things of God. Intuitive tithing. Uh, Jacob, Jacob is unclear about his future. Jacob, he's unclear about what's going to happen. Jacob, he, his name means trickster. He's like some of us, a shady character. He's running, Jacob, unclear about his future. And, and he has tricked his brother out of his birthright. Unclear about what's ahead. And he knows that his brother is angry at him. Uh, Jacob has been running and the sun is going down. And so he chooses a stone as a pillar. Uh, excuse the pun, but he's between a rock. Y'all ain't ready this morning. He lays down 
to sleep. And when he closes his eyes, the scripture says that he begins to dream. And I don't know about you, but I'm here to tell you that God uses dreams. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, God uses dreams. God uses dreams. Say it again. God uses dreams. There he is. There he is. He's dreaming. And in this dream, there is a ladder that goes from earth all the way to glory. And on this ladder, the angels of God are ascending and descending. And God himself stands at the top of the ladder and makes some promises to Jacob. God, while Jacob is between a rock and a hard place. God makes some promises. Uh, maybe I need to make a point right here. Your situation might look like it's so dark you can't see. Your circumstances might be so horrid that you are full of fear, but I'm here to tell you that even in that moment, God can make promises to you. Touch your neighbor and say, don't give up, don't give up. No, you all are not on the train yet. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, don't give up, don't give up. I, I know it looks dark, I know it's dim, but don't give up. I know you don't have what you'd like to have to get the presents this year. But don't give up. Because God is making promises. I said God is making promises. Even between a rock. And a hard place. Brother Theo, God told him. The very land you're laying on, I'm going to give to you. He says, you don't have any children yet, but I'm going to multiply you such that you'll be like the dust of the earth and every family on the earth is going to be blessed because of you. Promises that God is making to the trickster. The one who's running from his wrong and unclear about his future. God is making profound promises. The Lord says to Jacob. He says even your descendants. The people after you've long gone, they too are going to be blessed. I'm going to send them to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. Scripture says that Jacob wakes up. And when he wakes up, Pastor, he realizes. God was in this place. I don't know if you've ever had that experience or not. Where you were in the worship moment. You, you were engaged in a way that, that signified this connection, this nexus. And when it was over, you didn't really realize in the moment how impactful it was but after you walked away you had to say within yourself surely God was in this place so as Jacob assesses what happens as Jacob measures analyzes what happened 
Jacob says. This pillar. This rock that I employed as a pillar, used as a pillar. Scripture says he takes and pours oil on the stone and he gives it a name. He says, this is Bethel. For those of us that like to be impressive, we say Bethel. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready this morning. Beth Beth means house of. El means God. Beth El. Bethel means house of God. Listen. Jacob said, Lord, if you make real, if you're not playing with me, master, if what you said to me in this dream is true and I accept it, he said, Lord, I'm going to give you a tenth. You read it yourself. He said, I'm going to give you a tenth. Not a tenth. Help me, Holy Spirit. This tenth does not go to the goodwill. This tenth does not go to the person standing on the corner with the cup. This tenth does not go to the Salvation Army. The, 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 there are worthy causes. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, but this tenth that Jacob speaks of, he's clear where it is to go. It's to go to Bethel. Oh, y'all don't like my message. This tenth is to go we were looking at what Jacob shared through New Testament lenses. He's saying the church, the house of God is the church. The house of God is the church. Let everybody repeat after me, the house of God. Say it again, the house of God. Say it again, the house of God is the church. Say it with conviction, is the church. And he says that the 10% is not going anywhere other than the house of God, which is, which is, which is, which is. Which is I need you to get it in your spirit because there are some persons here this morning who are not tithing. I'm not talking about the law. Jacob is before the law. Jacob is before the law. Mm. Can I go deeper, Pastor? I, 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 I know I... I might be pushed off your favorite list this morning. <laughs> Jacob has encountered God in this dream in a way that he's never encountered him before. Jacob in this dream and thereafter has engaged in Worship. Somebody say worship. Say it again, worship. Tithing, get this, is connected to worship. Somebody say worship. I, I, worship, worship. Tithing, 
tithing. Listen, listen, listen. Let me give you something. This is, I'm going into my bag now. This is deep. I'm, I'm going into the bag now. I, I need you to understand this. Worship. Boundaries. Worship. Boundaries. Trust. Let, every, let everybody re repeat after me. Worship. Worship. Boundaries. Boundaries. Trust. Trust. And abundance. I, I, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Let everybody say worship. worship. Boundaries. Boundaries. Trust. Trust. Before the law, Jacob is saying something in me without rationality, without conscience reasoning. Something in me is saying that if God, you do this for me, there ought to be something on the inside that says, I'm obligated to do this for you. Uh, let, let, let me say it again. There is something in me. There is something in me before the law. Abraham is not on the uh, uh, Moses is not on the scene yet. But there is something in me. There is something on the inside of me that says, if you are willing to do all of this for me, without, without conscious reasoning, without all the facts that's going to come later with the law, there is something on the inside of me. Mama would call it appreciation. My mama said, if somebody give you something, oh, you're not with me. I was raised, Brother Theo, come up in the church. I was raised in the church. My daddy was a pastor. My mother sits second row. I can see her. And uh, Christmas time, Christmas time, they, 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 back in the day, they would give out little brown paper sacks that it have an orange or apple in it, some nuts, and maybe 50 cents a quarter or something in the bag, and all of those kids, and we would line up, children of the church, and uh, we step up, and they would give us our little Christmas bag. Some of y'all remember, some, some of y'all remember, you know, those of us raising church, they'd get, you'd get your Christmas bag. So one by one, they would hand out the bags, Christmas bag to each child got one, everyone got one. And my mother, she would watch sitting on the front row. And, and, and before, Theo, before the bag got in my hand, my mama said, well, now what you gonna say? What you gonna say? The bag wasn't even in my hand yet. Now, now what? What you gonna, we taught you better than that. What you going to say? And I wanted to say, Mama, can I at least get the bag first? And I couldn't have said that because I got a backhand. So I but I'm trying to tie this to the sermon this morning. There is something on the inside. That when God has been good to you, something down on the inside that says, I don't care what the law says. I don't, I don't care what the preacher says. I'm obligated to show God my gratitude. And so I need to say, I, 
I need to say that worship, the first act of worship, is to give God 10%. The first act of worship is to give God what's his. When you don't, it puts a strain on the relationship. I know you don't like me. And I'm the one with the microphone this morning. When you don't, when you don't give him what's his, can, can I just be flat out, just go straight at it? The psalmist said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. So really all of it, ready all of it belongs to God we are just stewards all of it belongs to God you you didn't you didn't you didn't have any of it when you got here and when you leave you can't take any of it with you we are just stewards and so the Lord says the Lord says the Lord says give me what's Give me what's mine, listen, based on what I've given. Worship, worship. Let everybody say worship, worship. Say say it again, worship. The first act of worship, the first act of worship, the first act of worship is to give him the ten percent. Listen, I'm I'm not at the law yet. I'm just talking about intuitive tithing. Worship. Boundaries. Boundaries suggest this goes nowhere but Bethel. S- somebody say this goes nowhere. Beth El. Trust. Those that don't tithe don't trust him. They don't trust him. But it doesn't make sense. Because you are suggesting that he's given you 100%. And you can't trust him to give him 10%. If we check the tithe list here at the St. Luke Church, your tithe reflects your level of worship. Your tithe determines your level of trust in him. I I, I have to tell you the truth because one day I got to stand before him and he's going to grade me on how efficient I was in telling you the truth. And so I've come to say to you that that If he's given us the hundred percent, if he's given us all that we have, trust him with what's his. Uh, uh, Since I'm over here on unpopular grounds, let me give you the whole loaf. You're not doing God a favor. You're not doing the church a favor when you give God what? 
I, I, I knew this wasn't a shouting message. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But my prayer is that it's a sobering message. Because the tenth is his. And you don't get credit. You are not celebrated for being a good father. That's what you ought to do. We're not celebrating you for being a good mother. That's what. Didn't know, didn't know, the child didn't say to you, I want to come here. You, you, you and Willie Earl got together and my point is you don't get a gold medal for doing what you are supposed. Tithing belongs to God and you don't do him a favor. You don't do the church a favor when you do what you're supposed. Uh, and so, and so, if you're not a tither, start today. If you're not a tither, start today. I'm not going back to January of 22 to say you should have done this, you should have done that. Let's appropriate this and appropriate that. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. But Pastor Will has come to say to you this morning is... We're going to start today. So, somebody say, we're going to start today. Say it again. We're going to start today. Come on, one more time. Say it. We're going to start today. Say, say it again. We're going to start today. Will, will, will you give me just about five more minutes? And I'll close, Pastor. I promise. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. There is something in me that says, Lord, I had friends that died during COVID season. Lord, I went to funerals. I mourned the death of those whom I knew. There are some hungry people in Harlem. There are some homeless people in the city of New York. And yet, Lord, you somehow built a hedge. I can't give you a good reason why I'm still here. I, I can't tell you, blessed be God, how it was you made a way sometimes out of. And so there is something, something in me. There is something in me that says, I owe you. And one of the ways I do that is by looking at these ten fingers and declaring that you, you have obligated of what I have if I, if it's on, if it's on the main job for the main bills, uh, if it's my side hustle, I, I go to work every day, but I, I have a side hustle. I, I, have, I, have, I teach our people in Houston that you ought to have at least seven streams. You ought to have seven side hustles that brings in something. 
seven. Let everybody say seven, seven, seven. I don't have time. Lord, have mercy. I promise five minutes here. Five minutes here. Seven streams. And of every stream that comes, I give God. Y'all don't like my message. My precious congregation gives me a salary each week. Then once a year, they bless me with an anniversary. And each time I come here to St. Luke, you all bless me. Y'all are very kind to me. One time, y'all blessed me, and I got on the plane going back, and the plane was flying sideways. <laughs> Y'all had blessed me with so much. They, they couldn't figure out why the plane going. And the side I was sitting on was side. Y'all blessed Pastor Will. You're always generous with Pastor Will. And I'm grateful. But guess what? Out of every dime I get, I set aside to bring it to you. My caretakers know Trustees know, ministers know. Well, some of them see the tide. Those on the inside see the tide. They say, Pastor been out. <laughs> and by the look of this, looked like he was at the St. Luke Church. <laughs> what are you saying? Out of everything I get. I'm going to confess a little carnality, and then I'm going to close. I'm confessing a little carnality here. Pastor Will's confessing a little carnality. Open confession is good for the soul. When that lotto. So, somebody see where I'm going already. That lotto jumped up to $1.2 billion. I normally preach against it, but I got in line that time. I bought my ticket. Are you kidding me? $1.2 billion for a dollar? I got in line. Guess what? If if I had won, how proud I would have been to give God. Ten percent. Here's my clothes. Here's my clothes. Here's my clothes. Clothes in my Bible. Here's my clothes. Here's my clothes. Stay with me now. Here's my clothes. To give God 10% of your income. Somebody do, do a little calculation with you. What's 10% of a billion? 100 million? What's 10%? Hundred. Listen, listen, yo, I'm closing, I'm closing. Listen, listen, look, look right here, Pastor Will. To give God a hundred million dollars. To give God a hundred million dollars. I'm gonna say it one more time. To give God. million dollars. There's some people who would say that's too much money to give the church. How do you know, Pastor Will, you have gave God a hundred million dollars. Here, here's the clothes. Here's my clothes. How do you know you would have given him a hundred million dollars? I 
do you know? How do you know? How do you know, Pastor Will? How do you know? Money changes people. How do you know? How do you know, Pastor Will? I know because, listen, listen. He said, if you'll be faithful over. If you are consistent giving him out of the little that you have. If you're faithful to tithing out of the check you get the first of every month, the first and second, if you give and you're paid every week, giving God faithfully his 10%. If you're consistent, if you're consistent, because when you tithe, I'm reaching out in the bag. Now I'm reaching in my bag. When you are faithful to God in giving of the little, it never stays little. There's always increase. And if you're faithful on the increase, God gives you another increase. And then you're faithful on that increase. God gives you another increase. And if you stay faithful on that increase, he gives you another increase. And then when, blessed be God, the ship comes in. Ain't no question what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to give God 10%. It's what I call intuitive tithing. Father, we thank you this morning for the word of the Lord. You sent me to talk about tithe. So much more could be said. My prayer is that in this season, that during this holiday time, I challenge the people to trust you. To trust you. I I didn't have time to get to abundance. But Malachi said, you'll open, you'll give us so much beyond our needs that we'll not have room enough to receive. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the word of the Lord this morning. I I pray conviction will come. I pray those of us who have not been tithing, will recommit, rededicate. Lord, help us to be all in. In your name, I ask that you will make real this message. Thank God and amen. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory and honor. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory and honor.